Hi there and welcome back to Mastering the Young Band. Uh, this video, I'm gonna talk about how I approach beginning horn more in terms of scope and sequence and specifically in their starting key. And uh, for second and third year players, I wanted to talk just a little bit about um, strategies for rehearsing your band, specifically when it comes to tempo. Um, so first I wanna start with horn. Um, I am a firm believer in starting your beginning horns on their C, D, E, F, and G rather than, um, as you know, most method books start them in concert B flat, so they would start them on their F, G, A, B flat, and C. Um, that is a very high range for your horn players to start on your beginner horns, and to have them start up there is just gonna create tension in their embouchure, it's gonna cause them to do different things um, to get those sounds to work. Um, so I start my horns on the notes C, D, E, F, and G. That puts them a fourth away from the rest of the band. So when I actually begin, um, my, my beginners, what I do is I have the horns always play separate from um, the other instruments. In my, in my class, I have flute, trumpet, and horn all in one class. So I'll do something with the trumpets, then I'll do something with the flutes. And then with the horns, I make sure that they um, hear their pitches because they're obviously going to be a fourth off the rest of the band. I do a ton of playing with them at the beginning. Um, so this is after they have their formation set and after we've been playing for a little while. Um, so when they first play, by the way, I just go, I play, you play. And if I've set them up correctly, most of them are either gonna get second line G or first line E. Um, and we just do lots of back and forth. I don't care too much that first week or two um, if they are on matching my pitch. I, I do care if they're going up too high or too low. I try to get them up into that G or E range. But we do a ton of I, I play, you play. And then we start going to what I call kind of home base, and that is their G, E, and C. So before the horns play, I always play this sequence. <laughs> play it back to me. I do it again. And we'll go down the row really checking. At the beginning, not every horn player can get all three notes. Sometimes they'll only get one, maybe two notes. And by the way, another precursor to that is definitely doing mouthpiece buzzing, um, getting them to do their sirens from high to low. Um, and that's, that's a precursor to this as well. Um, but we'll do a lot of that. And then I have the horns, again, playing their C, D, E, F, and G, which is off of the band. Um, so once we've been playing for a couple of weeks that way, where I'm just working with the horns, just working with the trumpets and flutes together, then for the first time, I actually do um, have the horns play along with the trumpets and the flutes. And what I do is I use my harmony director. I set it to the key of B flat. And then what I do, I'm gonna go ahead and have it on the trumpet sound. And I'll actually play both notes together so they can hear it. So this is the horn note. Here's the trumpet note. And what I'll do is, say, okay, band, we're going to go I play, you play. I'm going to play both the horn notes and the trumpet flute notes and together. And so we'll spend, um, we'll play an exercise playing that. So the flutes will be playing their F, trumpets will be playing their G, and horns their G. I'll set the tempo to tempo 72. And then we'll go, I play, you get, um, I play, you play. So I'll tell them, okay, set, here we go. And breathe, they play it back. Breathe, my turn. Breathe, they play it back. Typically do that four times. We talk about it a little bit. I'll even ask them too. I'll go, how many of you think you were playing this note? I'll ask the horns that and the trumpets and so on. And we do it again. And we do a lot of that. Not every kid, I would say maybe 50% of the kids at first are actually playing the correct note that way. And so we just keep doing that. I'll go, okay, trumpets, play your G. Flutes, play your G. Okay, no horns, play yours. And we play that home bass G, E, C. And I, I like to use the harmony director to play. I do demonstrate on trumpet and flute as well. But the harmony director frees me up to give instructions while they're playing. Here's an example. All right, band, set. Good elbows, please. And breathe. Make sure you're tapping your toe. And breathe. 
you can hear by playing on the harmony director like that, I can give instructions. If I have an instrument, it can be difficult, for instance, to give them that two count breath when they're playing. Um, and so we do that a ton. Then we'll also transition to the C. So the trumpet's playing their C, flute's their low B flat, and the horn's their low C. So then we'll go I play, you play on the lower note. We'll go back and forth. And it's amazing, after about two weeks or so of doing that, the horns really start hearing their partials, how they're that fourth off of the band. And once you get them doing that, um, so for my band right now, I see my band every other day for 80 minutes. Um, it's the third week of October, and the horns are really starting to lock in a fourth from the band on everything we do, whether it's our warm-ups out of Essential Foundations. Um, we use the Sound Innovations book. I don't even have to anymore play home bass for them. They are now hearing their part down a fourth. Um, so it's really starting to lock in for them. Um, if you've never done uh, your horns playing um, in that different key, it can be intimidating at first. You're gonna second guess yourself and go, ah, gosh, my kids are just not getting it. Um, you have to be patient, the kids have to be patient. My, my best advice is start off separate, keep your instruments separate, try some exercises together, separate again, and just keep reaffirming. And of course, you have to go down the row hearing each kid, just to hear the kids, especially that are playing too low. You always get kids that are just playing you know, two partials too low down there, and you have to work on getting them up. So that's what I do with my beginning horns. They start a fourth down from the rest of the band. It works really well, and hey, they're horn players. They are playing harmony so much. It's great to develop their ears um, to be able to hear the harmony and to play with the band that way. Um, one other quick note too, even with my second and third year players, when we play concert F, I do have um, my horns play their G. So even when we're playing a concert F together as a band, it sounds like this. So you're always gonna hear that fourth in there because that's the best spot for them. That's the middle of their range is on that G. Try it. Um, if you don't have a harmony director, um, you could also use, um, there's the um, Tonal Energy app with a keyboard. I used to use that for years. You could even use your fingers on, on your iPad or your phone. It's not quite as quick as a harmony director, um, but I did that for about five years and it, it works well too. Um, for your second and third year players, I just wanna give you a bit of advice. Um, so first of all, when you're learning a piece of music, learn it at half tempo. So especially fast music, let's say your piece is written at tempo 152, learn the piece, learn the rhythms at tempo 76. Have the kids count it, daw it. I usually don't do note naming. This is sheet music, by the way, with sheet music, um, air and finger and play. So we learn our sheet music very, very slow. And I really make sure that the vertical alignment is there. Okay, we want our kids to make sure they understand the rhythms and that it's all vertically aligned. Once it's all pretty well vertically aligned, then I add in their articulations. I'll add in their slurs, their staccatos. I'll also add in their dynamics, all at that slow tempo. Tempo 76, nice and slow if it's at 152. If it's at tempo 132, I don't know if I'd necessarily go to 65. Once you go much slower than 72, that starts getting a little bit too slow. Um, if it's a really fast song, maybe it's 164, I might start them at tempo 82 or 92, but start at a half tempo and learn the piece first that way. Then once the kids get it, then you can start incrementally bumping it up. And by the way, it's not like you have to go, so that tempo 152, it's not like you have to go from tempo 76 to 80, to 84, to 88. It just doesn't work that way. Once you get the kids vertically aligned and then you can, you can bump it up pretty much 16, 24 beats to their next step, and then there'll be another step and then pretty soon they're at full tempo. Now, the second thing I want to talk to you about with tempo. So your, your band sounded good, you got the piece at 152, but you're also hearing some errors and you can tell the articulation's getting sloppy, they're not paying attention to their intonation, they're not paying attention to their dynamics or their balance and blend. Go back to that half tempo. And what I tell my kids, like, okay, and I just did this, we have a concert coming up in, in a day, um, and just two days ago, I said, hey, let's run this section in slow motion, everybody, so you can really focus on your articulation and your dynamics. Here we go. And we did a slow motion run of a section. We didn't do the whole song. We did a section of it. Nice, slow tempo. And we stopped. Then I put it to full tempo. And a little trick I like to do is I, I call it air and finger. So we do a full tempo run um, with airing and fingering where they're playing and they're feeling that, but they're not playing yet at the full tempo. 
then playing the full tempo with the metronome. It's amazing how it locks in. They're more attentive to their articulation, to their dynamics. If you have a really strong percussion section that you trust, another step too is you can go half tempo, full tempo air and finger, full tempo percussion, and then full tempo band and get a couple repetitions that way. That's a great way of cleaning your band and it really tells you if your students understand their notes and rhythms when you go to that, to that slow motion tempo. So another tip to try when you start your music, your fast music especially, start it much slower and be patient. Don't speed up that tempo too quickly. Make sure your students understand their rhythm, make sure they understand their articulation, dynamics, even balance and blend to a certain degree. Thanks everyone.